Okay, just going to show you a quick tutorial on how to make uh, Knots and Crosses game using Visual Basic 2010 Express Edition. Uh, you can get this um, just type into Google uh, Visual Basic Express. It's a free product, which is why I'm using it mostly. So basically, to start off, we just click on a new project, and that'll open up this window. One of Windows Form application. I'm not going to go into any of the options at the minute. Basically, change the name of it. Just click on the top one, change the name of it from Windows Application 1 to whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's quite difficult to change the name later on, so it's best that you um, get the name right from the start. I'll just call it O's and X's. It's not some crosses, basically, so just hit OK once you've got the name that you would like to call it. Just wait a second for it to load up, it's usually pretty quick. Okay, so straight away you can see we've got a form, a blank form, with the maximize, uh, size change, minimize, and uh, the close button. If you hit play straight away, you can see that it opens up a form. So you can change the size of that, maximize it, minimize it, close that by down, and we're back into the form. So first of all, we're just going to add a button onto the page. I've got my toolbox at the left hand side, if you haven't got a toolbox in there at the moment then you should have an option at the top uh, there, just click on that and that'll hopefully show you a to toolbox somewhere on the screen. So first of all from our toolbox we're going to find a button, uh, there's a lot of options in here but the only one we're going to use in this tutorial is the button. So let's just double click on that control, you can either double click on it or you can drag it into the form itself but basically, uh, so that's just added the button into my control. So when you click on the button, obviously you've got the points around it to change the size of it. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger that way. It's up to you how big you want it. So basically, if we go into the properties section, it might not be in the same place as it is on my screen, but you will have a properties somewhere. So if you click on the properties and then you click on your button, it will bring up all the properties of that button. So first of all, what we're going to look at is something called, well, it's just the text inside the button. Obviously you can see that says button 1, this says button 1. So basically we don't want that to see anything at the minute because we've actually not chose, chosen that button. So if you just delete that out press enter, you'll notice the text disappears from the button. You can also from here change the colour of the text, the font of it or anything like that, just to make it uh, the way you want it. And also the same with the form, if you click on the form itself you can change the form properties. Okay, so we are going to quickly if you basically if you click on the button itself double click on it it'll take you into the code and now what this means is basically that if you know the, the, the class part that's basically everything that's going to go inside and all, all the code that we use is going to be a part of the class form one um, so basically we start off we've got a button one click the name actually in uh, vb.net in this case doesn't actually matter what the name is the part that matters is the button one dot click handle on the end and um, basically what that means is when you click button one between the private sub and the end sub is what is going to run so everything between that part will happen when you click button one so let's quickly test that a message box is a great way to test things so if you just msg box uh, i'm going to put high and speech marks inside that and then when we click on this button you'll see a message box pop up saying hi Okay, so basically, first of all, what we actually want to do, we don't want a uh, message box in there, we want the text, button one, dot text, because every time you want to refer to something, you have to say what, what it is you're referring to, and then what about that particular object, which is uh, the text in this case, we want to change it to a cross, or a naught, in fact, let's be naughts. So now you'll notice, when I run it and click, it puts a naught, or a circle, inside the... <coughs> inside the button. Okay, so now we just want to add another another eight buttons on there. Now it's best if you keep these in order and actually do from left to right because it'll help with the ordering later on. So you know that it goes from left to right, one to three. So you can see up there the name of the button, uh, button one, two three four five six seven eight nine <clears throat> so now when i click on the second button you'll notice it creates uh, something an event for that button click button two dot click <clears throat> so when i click button two whatever happens here will ha happen there 
change that to button two dot text because I want button two's text to change to O uh, when I click button two. Obviously, nothing happens on the rest of the buttons yet. So let's just quickly save this. Right. First of all, though, we don't want to just put something in the button because if the button's got a cross in it, that means somebody's already gone, and therefore. Uh, we don't want to change that to a circle if there's already a cross in there. <clears throat> and also, we don't want the computer to run its turn later on uh, if that's already, if we've already put our circle in there. So, basically what we're going to say is if, quite a classic if statement, you use these quite a lot. Uh, you start off with if and then you have to give a true or false statement. It's called a Boolean statement. But basically, it's if this equals this or this does not equal this, returns true or false and that will give you a result. So basically what we're checking for is if button one dot text equals in fact yes we'll say blank then so what that means is if button one text is blank then it will do everything between the then and the end if. So let's put that into there. You could also say if button one dot text does not equal blank then exit sub maybe on the end which would actually mean get rid of the end if on there that would actually mean that uh, you wouldn't run it if the uh, text box has something in it. it they both come up with the same result basically this just keeps it a bit cleaner uh, generally I like to do it the other way there but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it this way so it won't make any difference in this game Okay, so basically what we're saying is if button one text does not equal blank, then exit sub. In other words, we don't want to run the next bit. So we're saying message. Let's let's do a test on it by putting a message box at the end of it, just so you can see how it's working. See that the button wasn't blank, so it said hi. But now it's got something in it, so I won't get the message box anymore. In other words, whatever's after that will not run because uh, it's already filled. Okay, so now what I want to do is I also, after it's checked if I can put something in it and it puts something in it, it then needs to check for a computer's turn. So I'm just going to quickly <coughs> write a computer brain. It's uh, going to be quite a simple one. It's literally just going to check uh, for any blank spaces in this tutorial. Uh, I can always add a bit more, a few more comments on later on uh, to give a bit more detail than this. Uh, so basically, if button one text does not equal blank, then button one text equals circle. So you put a circle in there. And then what we want to do is we want to run the computer's turn, which is going to be down here. To tell it to run that, you simply put the name in the in the sub that you wanted to run on the line you wanted to run at. Uh, so basically, if we if we run that line by line, if I if you press F11 in my particular case, it could be F. I've known it to be F5 and F8 before. Um, so if you press F11 and then you click one of the buttons, you'll see the yellow line come up. This this is basically debug mode, so we can go through it line by line. And if you have any errors or anything like that, you can find out exactly which line the error is on. So you can see it goes from top to bottom. Starts off because I've clicked button one, you know it's running this sub. So press F11 to go down a line. If button one dot text does not equal blank because button one that text is not equal blank, there's nothing in it yet, then exit sub. But, uh, obviously the cell, the, uh, obviously button one hasn't got anything in it yet because I haven't clicked it yet, so we're going to put something in it. So that particular line, we'll put the uh, circle inside button one, and then it runs the computer's turn. So when I skip over this, it goes straight over to here, the computer's turn, so you know it's going to run anything inside there now. Okay. And then that's that's the end of uh, the sub. So now you can see that that now contains a circle. So now we can quickly do that for every single button on the page. Uh, if we just copy that and then just paste it down into button two and just change that to button two dot text. Button two dot text. Okay, and then run computer's term. Okay, so now if we try that, we know it's basically the same result. But if you double click on a button, obviously it shows you uh, button three, it creates a new event handler for you. 
but actually in this case the quicker way of doing it is actually copying we'll do it with the above one because then it'll already have the events inside it is actually copying the entire thing and just changing all the button twos to button three because there's no other numbers in this i'll just replace two with three so now when i click button three it'll do the same thing i'll try and keep it quick uh, so I'll just sh quickly show you how the computer could make a move. <coughs> so if button one, what text does not equal equals blank. In fact, we'll use in this case then button one dot text equals cross in speech marks. Now we're going to use it else. button 2.text equals cross. Now this is this is not the right way of doing it. I'm going to show you the right way in a second. I'm just going to give you an example of why this is wrong. Okay. So when I click that, obviously I can't go in the second cell because it's not blank. But if I click that one, it won't be checking for... Uh, basically, it's not actually checking if button 2 is blank as well. It's only checking... Uh, button one and it's saying if button one text is blank uh, then do this but if it's not then put something in button two but actually we want to check you can do an else if it's kind of a new feature to um, to Visual Studio uh, 2010 that I've noticed I didn't notice any other one so else if <coughs> we're doing the same thing again as we did up here basically except we're saying button two dot text equals blank then button two dot text equals cross and then the same again down here Let's change that to button three quickly okay and if I go here first that will go there first so it's got a little bit of a, it knows where it can go basically now. I uh, can add a few more onto there if I just put else if button 4, else if button 5, else if button 6, etc. And that will then run on every button. So that's a quick way of making notes and crosses. Uh, if you want to add a bit more of a brain to it, uh, you'd probably want to say private sub. The private doesn't really matter in this case, just as long as you say sub, you can, you can ignore the public. Uh, I'm not going to come into that into this tutorial though. Uh, check for blank spaces is probably the best way to do this. Uh, and then put all that in the check for blank spaces part because that's going to be the last thing the computer does. Because really the first thing the computer does is I find the most logical way is to check if it can win in its next move first. Okay, now I want to say this is actually a function because I want it to return a value, a boolean value, which is true or false. Uh, and here I'm going to quickly say if can computer win, then exit sub because the computer has one in this one if, if you if you write the code to make it so it will win basically you just need to check if one equals if button one equals uh, cross and button two equals cross then obviously if button three equals blank then uh, put something in button three and you've won uh, so that's basically how you'd write something to say if computer can win uh, I suppose to be more precise you might want to say next move uh, and basically by running that if you say in here return true then that will get true uh, otherwise if you said false it will get false out of it uh, so it won't exit um, <coughs> but basically you can, you can, there's another way of doing this you can also say equals uh, true so that actually means that whatever 
result this ends up getting, it will tell this that it's got it basically. So that's just a quick tutorial on how to start off in notes and crosses. From this information, basically just this alone, uh, not necessarily even including the functions, uh, I have made um, notes and crosses the full game, uh, and that's on my website www.personalizeddevelopment.co.uk. Um, see if you can beat it, um, and that's using just if statements in this way. Okay, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to.